Title IX is a portion of the United States Education Amendment of 1972, and it states that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of gender, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. The passing of Title IX in 1972 clearly fostered the courage in excelling among women that triggered women's ascendance into leadership positions and has left a positive legacy among American people today, though it is not always without some negative consequences. Before this law, schools weren't required to offer athletic, extracurricular, or even as many educational opportunities to women and girls, whereas men were always offered these things. In school, women took classes like home economics to be taught how to work in the kitchen, while their male peers would attend math and science classes. There were a limited amount of jobs that women were allowed to have, like being a teacher or a receptionist. They would rarely play sports, and when they did, they were disparaged. In fact, women would be warned about the alleged hazards of being too athletic or intelligent, while males were always encouraged to strive for the most prestigious jobs. People felt that women were only useful in the kitchen. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can World do War II and how it relates to Title IX. During World War II, since a vast majority of the men were gone fighting, women had to take more initiative in order to keep the country going. Sooner or later, I'm greater than you. Rosie the Riveter was a cultural icon during this time who represented the six million women who entered the workforce during World War II. Her famous slogan says, We can do it, representing the things that women were capable of doing. However, when the males returned, the women had to give back the jobs that they got during the war. And again, the United States receded back into that place where women were lesser. And it wasn't until the early 70s that the United States started making great leaps and bounds towards better gender equality in the country. Now let's hear about the tribulations of real women like Katherine Switzer, who was the first woman to ever run the Boston Marathon. Running long distance was always considered, you know, very questionable for women because, you know, an arduous activity would, would mean that you're going to get big legs and grow a mustache and hair on your chest and your uterus was going to fall out. People were so opposed to women in athletics that they actually amounted to attacking people like Katherine Switzer. And all of a sudden, the flatbed truck is in front of us, and I heard the photographer saying, slow down, slow down, slow down, and they're taking pictures of us. On this truck was the race directors. One of them was a feisty character by the name of Jock Semple. He just stopped the bus, jumped off, and ran after me. Suddenly I turned, and he just grabbed me and screamed at me, get the hell out of my race and give me those numbers. And then he started clawing at me, trying to, try to rip my numbers off. And I was so surprised. And he had the fiercest face of any guy I'd ever seen, and, and out of control, really. Um, I was terrified. This picture is from 1967, before Title IX was enacted and before people were okay with women playing sports. The composition of this photo was done by the photographer to provide evidence of the struggle of women athletes. Now let's look at some important players in the passing of the legislation. The perseverance of these individuals were vital to Title IX and its passing in Congress. First, let's look at Birch Bay, a senator from Indiana. He was the author of the legislation and is commonly known as the father of Title IX. He was constantly involved in trying to get the legislation to be passed. Here, you see him running with women who went to Purdue University, a school he went to himself. This is one of the most famous pictures of Title IX. He was also very outspoken about his views on Title IX and the passing of his legislation. One of his most famous quotations is, It's unfortunate. Title IX is rather simple. Don't discriminate on the basis of sex. This is Bernice Sandler. Referred to by the New York Times as the godmother of Title IX, she played an integral part of the creation and the passage of the law. One of her most famous quotations is, Sex prejudice is so ingrained in our society that many who practice it are simply unaware that they are hurting women. It is the last socially acceptable prejudice. 
Patsy Mink, another influential individual, also known as the mother of Title IX, according to Sports Illustrated, fought tirelessly for its passage. Her goal was for women and men to have educational equity. And Miss Patsy Mink, along with all these other influential people and the civilians of the United States, eventually got what they wanted. Title IX was passed by the United States Congress on June 23, 1972, and was officially signed by President Richard M. Nixon on July 1, 1972. Its passing was revolutionary for gender equality in athletics and education, and Title IX's legacy still impacts women and men today. Title IX has certainly had a lasting legacy on the United States. Though most of it is good, there are still some things that Title IX has yet to accomplish. First, let's focus on the good legacy that Title IX has left behind. Title IX has been revolutionary to gender equality in the United States. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in 1960, only 22% of American women had jobs. In 2011, over 66% of women had jobs. This would not have been possible if it weren't for Title IX. A Policy Mike article words it perfectly. Title IX was a product of a social revolution which engulfed America in the post-World War II years, breaking down numerous boundaries. So, we can see that Title IX has brought about a time where the majority of American women have jobs. Without Title IX, America might still be in that place where working women were sometimes even frowned upon. Another positive effect of Title IX is that millions of women are much more active today. Since the 1970s, female participation in sports has increased exponentially. In 1971, the year before the legislation was passed, fewer than 30,000 girls participated in high school athletics. To put that number in perspective, that's only 7% of all high school athletes that were girls. In 2010 to 2011, the number of female athletes has climbed by more than 10 times what it was before, to nearly 3.2 million, or 41% of all high school athletes. This was all possible, again because of Title IX, which caused funding for female athletics in schools to be risen. In 1972, women received only 2% of schools' athletic budgets, and athletic scholarships for women were non-existent. In 2009 to 2010, women received 48% of the total athletic scholarship dollars at Division I schools. It's also been proven that participation in sports brings both immediate and long-term benefits. Female athletes have been proven to do better in school. They've been proven to be less likely to engage in risky behavior and are generally healthier than girls and women who do not participate in sports. So since Title IX opened up these doors for women in athletics, it has helped thousands of women receive these benefits that athletics have to offer. But despite the huge amount of progress that Title IX has made over the past 40 years, still, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So let's talk about the things that Title IX has not achieved. Previously, I talked about how women are now receiving 48% of total athletic scholarship dollars at Division I schools. However, they only received 40% of the total money spent on athletics, despite making up 53% of the student body. I also talked about how 41% of all high school athletes are girls, which is good, but still, women athletes remain to be the minority. And while Title IX has allowed women to close the gap of gender equality in the United States, inequities still exist. On average, for every dollar a man makes, a woman makes 77 cents and possibly even less than that, depending on their race. Title IX has been enacted for 40 years, and though it has allowed women to start making great strides into better gender equality, the results still are inadequate. Women are still only worth 77 cents at best on the dollar that a man makes for the same job. So clearly, though Title IX has made huge strides towards better gender equality in the United States, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Although Title IX has not quite left the legacy of true gender equality, it is clear that it helped the United States close the gap farther than it ever would have if not for the vision of the great leaders who assisted the enactment of Title IX.